you're a liar and a killer. These horrible people committed the most unthinkable acts on Halloween, but the law caught up to them and now they are seeing the consequences of their actions. Let's watch these convicts react to their sentences. Number 4. Nisha Johnson Nisha Johnson, only 17, arrived in court to hear his fate for his actions in a fatal shooting in Newburgh. Johnson pleaded guilty to two counts of the first degree for taking the life of 18-year-old Omani Free and 20-year-old Tabitha Cruz on Halloween. He was sentenced to 40 years to life in prison. The judge said, It truly is never going to be justice no matter what sentence is handed down in this case because true justice would bring back the victims. Johnson admitted he intended to destroy someone he had been in a fight with. Johnson shuffled into the courtroom to face a room full of his victim's advocates and offered an apology at his sentencing that left many cold and empty. They did not believe him. But the Orange County Chief Assistant District Attorney said Johnson fired the gun at the crowd at least 10 times and only stopped when he was forcibly disarmed. Appeared to be aiming it and repeatedly fired it multiple times at multiple people. He took out the weapon. There was nobody else with a weapon that was out. He advanced on unarmed people who were panicked and only stopped when he was forcibly disarmed by someone. Family members filled the courtroom wearing t-shirts bearing the girls' faces. Crying could be heard throughout the courtroom as family members of victims read impact statements. You made a conscious decision to pull out your gun and shoot with a total disregard and disrespect for anyone else's life, said a victim's mother. Well, I do forgive him, but I, he deserves to be prison, in prison. It's too late, but I accept it. Johnson showed no emotions as impact statements were read, but when given the chance, he did offer his apologies to the court and victims' families. Family members said now that the sentencing is over, they finally have some closure. He deserves to be in prison for the rest of his life, but I do forgive him, said Omani Free's mother Rhonda. Number 3. Mark Bethel Mark Bethel was sentenced to life in prison for two horrible slayings of 35-year-old Jessica Ann Payton and 37-year-old Sean Den Summers. Prosecutors say it all started when Jessica allegedly stole money and started dating Sean Summers. The state accused Mark of slaying Jessica in their home and using her phone to lure Sean on Halloween night. Later that night, Jessica's body was found north of Slayton in a small body of water in the area. Peyton's body was wrapped in a comforter bound by electrical tape and a white plastic bag around her head. Her body had been weighed down by a chain and cinder blocks. Summer's body was found after a call of shots fired that was received on Halloween night in Lubbock County. Initial responding officers searched the area but were unable to locate Summers or the exact location of the reported incident. Shortly before midnight Halloween, the sheriff's office was notified of a vehicle fire in East Lubbock. It was there that an unidentified body was discovered inside the fully engulfed vehicle. Prosecutors presented evidence during the trial that they believed showed Bethel and his cousin, 46-year-old David Bethel, conspired to take the life of Peyton and Summers after Mark Bethel found out that Peyton was cheating on him with Summers. Yeah, I'm not guilty of this. Mark's cousin David confessed to his involvement in Sean's passing after he was found in Arizona with a weapon related to the incident. David took a plea deal in 2015 and pleaded guilty to Sean's slaying. He was sentenced to 40 years for the crime. Prosecutor Baron Slack, in his closing argument, told jurors the evidence and testimony in the case showed that Mark Bethel was guilty of both slayings and trying to cover up the crime. A jury decided that 59-year-old Mark Bethel was guilty of the first-degree charges for the deaths of Jessica Ann Payton and Sean Den Summers. Do you think he had an intention of nobody finding out what he did and lying about it to police and it wasn't going to be discovered? And once everything was discovered, the facts leave only one conclusion about his involvement. Jessica and Sean passed away on Halloween night in 2015. Officials believe it all started at the house Mark and Jessica lived in together at Buffalo Springs Lake. Number 2. William Liskey When 16-year-old Devin Griffin walked into his house on Halloween and discovered the bodies of his mother, stepfather, and brother, he thought it was part of some twisted Halloween prank. But little did he know, it was all too real. When he realized what had happened, he quickly called an aunt who then dialed 911. William Liskey, a Northern Ohio man, pleaded guilty to slaying his father, stepmother, and stepbrother and was sentenced to spend life in prison without the chance of parole. The then 25-year-old was sentenced in Port Clinton and he had pleaded guilty to three counts of aggravated slaying in the incidents at the family's rural home outside Toledo. After fleeing the scene of the crime, Liskey was later arrested at a cabin. 
They've had a lot of trouble with him with the law, and he's threatened Susie before, but there have been all kinds of trouble," Griffin's Aunt Lori Morse told the news. In 2004, the younger Liskey was charged with assault and robbery and accused of hitting his stepmother with a coffee cup and taking her car keys. A plea of not guilty by reason of insanity was filed for him. The state later dropped the charges. A judge had found him competent to stand trial despite a history of mental illness. Liskey had a long history of arrests and criminal convictions and was involved in domestic incidents at the house. Ottawa County Prosecutor Mark Mulligan says the family thought the plea deal was fair and says he believes justice was served. As Liskey pleaded guilty, allowing the penalty to be taken off the table but life in prison without parole taking its place. However, in 2011, Liskey ended his life in prison, and that was the end of William Liskey's family. Number 1. Daniel Clay Daniel Clay, a Michigan man with a long criminal record, was sentenced to life in prison for the 2014 slaying of 22-year-old Chelsea Bruck. Bruck vanished from a Halloween party in late October 2014 in Frenchtown Township, Michigan. She was last seen leaving the party late at night with an unidentified man. After a six-month search that included the distribution of more than one million leaflets, Bruck's remains were found almost a year later in a wooded lot about 12 miles from the party site. Crime scene investigators collected DNA evidence on the leggings Bruck was wearing. In 2016, around the same time that Clay was charged in the separate criminal physical attack case, the crime lab confirmed a hit connecting Clay to the DNA sample. No evidence before us, uh, nor any reason to believe that the case was, that the murder was premeditated. Clay was arrested soon after at his girlfriend's Frenchtown Villa Mobile Park home. He was 27 at the time of the arrest. Clay's girlfriend, Kelly Richter, told the press that he confessed to the crime in a phone call the next day. During questioning by police, Clay admitted he was involved in Bruck's death, Monroe County Sheriff Dale Malone said. During the trial, Monroe County Sheriff Detective Brian Sroka testified that after Clay was arrested, he admitted he had taken Bruck's life but maintained it was an accident. I had no idea about what he was capable of or anything that he did or whatever. Like, it was a shock to me. Bruck was wearing a handmade costume of Batman villain Poison Ivy when she met Clay at the large outdoor Halloween party. He pulled up next to her and asked if she wanted a ride. She said she did. She got in the vehicle. Clay told detectives he and Bruck were having physical intercourse and that she'd asked him to choke her, and he did with his hands for about 20 to 30 seconds. She stopped breathing and he tried CPR, he claimed, but he couldn't revive her. He told detectives he freaked out. Clay said he drove to some train tracks about 10 miles from the party's location then carried the body from the vehicle into a wooded area until he became tired and hid it under some tree branches. I will live with this for every day for the remainder of my life. I mean, it's something that I would wake up thinking about, something that I would go to sleep thinking about. An autopsy by the medical examiner's office showed Bruck passed away because of blunt force trauma. Clay was charged with the second degree, and later he was also charged with one count of concealment of a body. His main second-degree charge was eventually up to the first, allowing the jury to consider a first-degree premeditated charge, which carried a mandatory life sentence. A jury found Clay guilty of the first-degree charge, and he was sentenced to life in prison. What's very clear to me, Mr. Clay, you're a liar, a rapist, and a killer. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.